How to find your life purpose. This is Matt Mitchell, Mission Life Motion. And I got a good one for you today, guys. So let's dive right in. So I have gotten a lot of questions about this. Um, you know, seeing as how my channel is called Mission Life Motion. And surprisingly, this actually is not a video that I have done yet on this specific topic of how to find your life's mission or purpose. So I thought it was finally time to cover this uh, specifically in a video and that's what we're gonna do over the next few minutes. So uh, at the end of this video, guys, I have a um, specific actionable step you can take, um, you know, that will continue to cultivate uh, creative ideas in your head as far as what you want to do. Of course, this video itself will give you a lot of ideas. Uh, I do encourage you guys to watch this more than once. I also have an article to this video, which is linked right down in the description below. Uh, it is the first link in the description below. <clears throat> so I encourage you to read it as well if you have time. Uh, this is actually one of my older articles at missionlifemotion.com. It's from two or three years ago. Uh, actually, the first article of 2018, it looks like. But anyway, uh, finally getting around to doing the video on it. But to finish what I was saying there, I've got... Just stay tuned till the end of the video because if you need, you know, specific, actionable advice and steps on where to go next after you after you watch this I've got a great great uh, suggestion for you so let's begin how to find your purpose or how and when will I know what my purpose is that's what a lot of younger men uh, in their early and mid 20s even their late 20s uh, are asking themselves these days. Okay, I know I certainly was in that camp when I was younger. When you're a young man, you know, in your late teens, early, mid-twenties, and in some cases even your late twenties, a lot of you guys are are wondering what it is you're going to do, how you're going to build your empire. When I, you know, if you're, if you've seen the videos on my channel, having a life mission or purpose is something I mention over and over and over again. I named my whole brand after it. So I think it's only fair that we cover this. There have been a lot of guys that have emailed me about this. So I think it's very interesting to hear how successful people discovered their life mission. I think this is especially interesting when, you know, these people did you know, as they're telling you their story or as you're reading or watching their story, to note that they were also at one point in their lives unsure. They didn't, they didn't always know. In many cases, some of them did, but most of them didn't always know what it is they wanted to do. They just discovered it along the way. So I find those stories to be incredibly interesting. Um, I'm one of those stories. I didn't always know what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna use myself largely as a personal example as we go through this. And in hearing my story, and I've, I've talked about this a little bit in some of my more recent videos, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try not to repeat myself because I've only really talked about the more recent things in my life that have happened. Not, I haven't talked so much about you know, how I got to where I arrived at a few years ago more specifically where I was in my early to mid 20s so we're gonna we're gonna touch on that on, on those parts of my story and in hearing my story I think you're gonna have some good ideas so let's see now I do want to mention guys okay that no one including me no one is going to fully be able to tell you what your life purpose is I can't do that, no one can do that, and no one should do that, okay? What I want to do is help you figure out the answer for yourself, okay? I want to open up some mental doors in your head that will allow you to see what's been right in front of you this whole time 
that you haven't been able to see, okay? Which is usually about how it works. Because the answer has been right in front of you, most likely, for a while now, and you just have been overlooking it. So I don't want to tell you what your life mission or purpose is. I want to enable you to figure out, for, enable you to figure out, figure it out for yourself. All right. Um, and you know that's not as hard to do as it may sound. There's just no one that can tell you that. And why would you want someone to tell you that? Why wouldn't you want to figure it out for yourself, right? So I will tell you how I discovered mine and I'll give you some suggestions and then actionable steps at the end of the video. Uh, okay, let's see here. So if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, um, you know, it's most likely you're a like-minded guy all right, you have a lot of the same opinions as I do on society, culture, women, dating, you know, uh, business, money. It, it's likely that you share a lot of my same viewpoints because if you didn't, you know, if you watch my channel, you read my blog, you follow me on Twitter, you know, you wouldn't be doing those things if you didn't agree with me to a large extent on a lot of this stuff, okay? I don't know why you would, right? Because I certainly don't follow channels on YouTube or read blogs of, of people that I don't agree with or like, right? So, you know, I'm hoping in saying that a lot of the stuff I'm about to touch on here will help you connect your own dots. So for me, it happened six and a half years ago, specifically, when I... I can narrow it down to one day, actually. Uh, it was June of 2014. Okay, I don't know exactly what day, and I, I think it was like the middle of the month or so. But I vividly remember the moment when I realized what it is that I wanted and needed to do. I was at my brother's apartment in Round Rock, Texas, which is where, that's the area of Texas that I went to high school in. And at that time, he lived in an apartment. This was six and a half years ago. And I was in his guest bedroom, and I remember realizing what my mission was, what I wanted to do with my life. Now, I imagine that this realization I had that hot summer day in June of 2014 was something that had been slowly accumulating in my head over the three days leading up to that day, it finally hit me. I don't think it's something I just, you know, suddenly thought of out of nowhere. I think that things had happened to me in the three days leading up to that point that slowly but surely were leading me to arrive at that revelation. But, you know, it's clear to me looking back on it now, okay, that I didn't know I was looking for anything, but I was, I just didn't know I was, all right? And what I was looking for was my true calling. What I was looking for was my own self-awareness of what my calling in life was. I wanted to be aware of what it was, okay? I didn't necessarily need to know every square inch of it inside and out, I just needed a self-awareness of 70, 80% of the entire picture, let's say, right? On a scale of one to a hundred. I didn't need to know every detail and you won't know every detail, okay? When you, when you experience this for yourself, but I needed to see, I needed to be able to make out the picture, right? I needed to be able to recognize finally what I was looking at and that's exactly what happened. So I was just tired. I was at a point in my life, I was 27 or 28 years old, 20, 28 years old. I was tired of not knowing, okay? I was tired of being unsure, probably how a lot of you guys might be feeling at, at the moment. And, you know, at that point in my life, I was selling insurance for another insurance agent, okay? And, uh, and, 
Texas near Austin. Well, actually, no, I was living near Dallas. I was just visiting my brother in the Austin area. But I was working for another insurance agent as a producer. And what that basically means is um, I would sell a policy, home, auto, or life policy, and I'd get a cut off the commission of the policies I would sell for his agency. And I was doing very well, and he paid me very well as you know as a producer for him because I did a good job. Um, now I eventually ended up breaking off and doing that on my own and having my own agency, but that this was prior to that. Okay, so I was doing well. Um, you know, at that time I I don't know I was making between you know seventy five and hundred k a year at that point in my life you know, just working under him as a producer. So I was good at what I did and, you know, I busted my ass. At that time in my life, I thought selling insurance would be what I would be doing for the rest of my life. Now, I've never liked to think about things in terms of the rest of my life due to the finality of it, right? Um, I just don't like the thought of restricting myself to one thing for the rest of my life, no matter what category we're talking about. That's just a scary thought to me. But uh, in any case, because of the great year I had been having at the time, okay, because I had an outstanding year financially in 2014. I mean, I wasn't like completely killing it, but it was better than I had done up until that point in my life. and. You know, I, I wasn't making a base salary either. That, you know, I was making almost six figures just on commission, okay? With only a little bit of residual income coming in because I'd already been doing it for, you know, two, two and a half years by, by the time I got to 2014. So I was doing pretty well for myself and, you know, I wasn't unhappy. I wasn't, oh, I gotta get out of here. This is miserable. I was making money, I was, selling policies, I was building confidence and self-esteem, and I still realized, right in the middle of all that, that I, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, I don't know if that means anything or not, I've actually never even stopped to think about that. I just thought about that as I'm going through this video. Uh, so that's kind of interesting, right? Uh, that's definitely not how it works with, I think, a lot of guys, a lot of guys, realize their mission when they're unhappy, when they're in the opposite situation. But I was actually doing well and I was pleased with how well I was doing and that actually provoked me to realize I didn't want to do that, that I wanted to do something else. So, um, you know, this whole idea I had at that time of doing that for the rest of my life as a career had a lot to do with the agent, the guy I was working for at the time. You know, he was getting into my young, impressionable head and selling me on the idea of a long career in the insurance business. Not that the insurance business is a bad business, it's actually a great business. Um, you know, if you're okay with being location dependent, that's not something I wanted to be, all right? I did not want to be tied to a location. I think I had just read the four, actually, no, I don't even think I'd read the four hour work week yet by this point. But definitely after I read that book by Tim Ferriss, I realized without question, I did not want to be tied to one location. So, but anyway, so there was that. And yeah, this guy I worked for was a natural born salesman. So much so that he believed his own bullshit, right? I'm sure you guys know people like that. Um, when you truly believe in what you're telling people, guys, you have the ability to make other people believe it too, all right? This process is what had been happening to me, all right? I believed in his core belief, what became his core belief, that that was the right thing for me business-wise. And I don't think he necessarily started off believing that, um, but again, this guy believed his own bullshit. I don't know at what point he eventually completely bought into what he was telling me. I think in the beginning it started off as him realizing, oh, this guy is gonna make me money, I need to keep him around. But then after telling me that enough times, I think he actually started to believe his own, his own uh, story. 
So, you know, if something is not truly right for you, something you're doing work-wise is not truly the best fit for you, if you don't have a burning passion for it, I think it's only a matter of time before that wears off. And, you know, there were aspects of that business that I liked. You can probably relate to a lot of the stuff I'm, I'm covering here too, guys, by the way. So as I'm going through this, think of how this can relate, how this relates to your current situation. Because I feel like what I was, what I'm describing here, what I went through is very, very, similar to what so many guys go through and are going through right now. So, you know, just keep that in mind as I go through the rest of this. There were aspects of that business that I liked, the insurance business, uh, as well as sales. And those aspects did come very naturally, naturally to me. I think one big reason for that was my dad. My dad was an incredible salesman, almost on like a freakish, freakishly good level like he was one of the best salesmen I ever knew okay and uh, he did very well uh, in his prime but sales is, is rough which you know making an entire an entire life out of sales can I think wear on you after a while I think it weared on him but he did a good job for a long time and a lot of that rubbed off on me when I was growing up so, so yeah, I was good at selling insurance, okay? Now, I think the real true reason I was so successful had nothing to do with my insurance knowledge, my product knowledge, or my knowledge of sales or psychology or anything like that, even though I think the sales knowledge and psychology attributed more to my success than product knowledge did. But I don't think those were the two driving factors. I think the two core reasons why I was so successful was two things. Number one, my work ethic, okay? There was and still is a fire, guys, that burns inside of me. And you gotta remember, I was younger at the time as well, uh, mid to late 20s, I had more testosterone. But uh, definitely, that fire is definitely still there, believe me, and, it, and it's always burning. And I've had that since I was a kid, all right? That's the first one. And the second reason is because people genuinely, genuinely liked and trusted me, okay? That's it. You know, the answer to life's questions, guys, are oftentimes a lot simpler than people want them to be. The fact of the matter is, perspective customers liked and trusted me because I was real, all right? I had no hidden agenda, and I really didn't, other than wanting to make money. Um, I believed in what I was selling them, and I wasn't trying to lure people into something that wasn't right for them. I had no hidden agenda, all right? People could sense that about me. They can. People are not stupid, guys, okay? And if you're in sales, you probably know that by now. Now, there are very slick, slimy sales guys that are able to do that, are able to lure people into things that aren't right for them anyway. Um, and there's different reasons for that that we're not going to go, we don't have time to go into in this video. But uh, generally speaking, for the most part, you know, you're not really going to succeed in sales if. You're not going to be an exceptional sales guy if people cannot sense a genuineness about you, okay? If they cannot sense that you care about them, okay? Or that you're just trying to turn a buck. Because if they do pick, that, pick up that vibe from you, you're going to have a very rough time in that profession, okay? I just, I've never been a dishonest person, and I never will be. Uh, it's just not in my nature to be dishonest. It's really not. Now, of course, honesty is not something that can be said for everyone. Uh, some people, as I'm sure you know, are dishonest by nature. You know, and sometimes you can spot them very quickly, and sometimes it can take years to realize someone is not who they claim to be, right? So it's easier to spot. It's easier to spot with some people than with others. But when someone is truly honest, you know, most people can sense it pretty quickly. Again, people are not stupid, right? 
most people can sense it very quickly. And that's how it was with me. If I spent time on, even if it was only over the, there were so many, so much business I did and so many policies and, and business I wrote just on the phone, not even in person, just over the damn phone. I mean, they could hear it in my voice and the way I talked, you know, that, that's how it was. So e even things like, you know, sending an email or a text message or having a phone conversation, people can pick up things like that even through those mediums, not just, not just you know, by standing in front of you, right? Uh, it, and and a, part of this was because this, this genuineness kind of radiated off of me. Maybe you can relate to this, maybe you can't, you might not be in sales, but uh, the point, you know, I'm trying to drive a point home here, all right? I had a drive okay, to become someone important, to become more than I was. And that drove my behavior, that drove my actions, that drove my success. These same two reasons were also what led me to discover my true mission and calling in life, which obviously wasn't to sell insurance. There were other things too. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys and is starting to sink in Hold on one second. Okay, yeah. Um, so now we're gonna kind of um, take this video in slightly different direction here, but that backstory is important. Okay, it's, it's important to hear that backstory. So in the days leading up to me discovering what it was I was gonna do with my life, um, I think I had been realizing that there were there were about six main things in my life, all right, that truly fired me up on a daily basis, a weekly basis, monthly basis. These six things fired me up constantly. They're all I thought about, basically. They inspired me, and I'd been thinking about these six things. I kind of had been coming to the realization that it was these six things that I was passionate about, all right, because by that point in my life, it was, I was 28, you know, starting to get a little bit older, um, relatively speaking, of course, but starting to get a little bit, you know, into my later into my early adulthood life at 28. And uh, as I was driving from Dallas down to Austin that weekend in June that year, I just was starting to realize like, wow, these six things keep resurfacing in my life, you know, year after year after year. I'm passionate about these things. So I ended up writing them down and here's what they were in no particular order. I was passionate about health and fitness, okay? Uh, I've mentioned before, I started lifting weights and doing push-ups when I was 14 years old. And by the time I was 15 and a half, I was completely shredded. Really, I was shredded like a bodybuilder at, at 15 and a half, okay? I started short, you know, five, six weeks after my 14th birthday, I started lifting weights. Uh, I always paid attention to food, what was good food, what was crap food, health and fitness basically. That was one thing I was always passionate about. Another thing was self-help or self-improvement and or personal development, self-care, improving, okay? Reading books, listening to podcasts, buying products that were going to improve or enhance my life in some way, becoming a better version of myself. That was the second thing I was passionate about. Third thing was attracting and understanding the opposite sex, women, okay? I always have wanted to know how to be better with women ever since I was, it actually started when I was 18 years old, okay? Uh, you know, I used to watch all the old David D'Angelo seminars and courses, you know, all the old pickup books I, I read multiple times. Um, that's a subject I've dived very deep into, uh, you know, at different points in my life, most of which was in my early to mid twenties. But yeah, that was the third thing, attracting and understanding women. Fourth thing, teaching and educating other people. Let me repeat that, teaching and educating other people. I'm gonna go into more detail about that in a second, all right? Number five, you know, on the list of six things that I was extremely passionate about. Number five, planning and organizing. 
planning and organizing. Kind of vague, but we'll talk more about that in a second. Number six, traveling, sightseeing, traveling. And more specifically, in my case, the idea and desire to travel, all right? So these were the six things in my life at that time that consumed all of my energy and attention and for good reason. I was interested in and motivated by these six topics. Today, it's pretty much the same. All right, although my interest in you know, being a big ladies man slash player isn't what it used to be, you know, I think that's something that should be of, you know, hopefully you get that figured out in your 20s. Some guys don't, and that's, that's fine, it is what it is. But uh, for me, I figured out how to master that area of my life in my mid-20s, okay? Um, not that I don't care about it at all. I do, of course, I still care about uh, that, that aspect of my life, just not in the same sense that I did in my, in my mid-20s. So, now I could write, I, I, you know, I could write 2,000 word articles under each one of these topics, and you know, I, I basically have done that at Mission Life Motion over the last three, four years. You know, and I could do that again, telling you why these topics have inspired or motivated me. But that's not the point of this video. What inspires and motivates me, even though it's probably similar, all right, if you watch my content, it's not gonna be exactly the same thing that inspires or motivates you. So, I mentioned a few minutes ago, you guys are, are probably interested in very similar things as I am, otherwise you wouldn't watch my channel consistently. But uh, it's not gonna be exactly the same. Everybody, every guy is, no one guy is exactly the same as the next, right? So what I started to think to myself after I made this list was, how can I incorporate these six things into my everyday life, all right? While also earning a living off of them, as opposed to just spending my time consuming them, okay, every day after work. How can I flip the script, okay? And you'll notice one of the things on my list was self-help. I think this was the second thing on the list. Self-help or self-improvement and personal development. Self-care, in other words. Naturally, guys, someone who's interested in self-care and self-development and improvement is someone who is consuming content via podcasts, YouTube videos, blogs, uh, you know, recorded seminars, whatever. Essentially information, content, right? Content and information that's packaged up and sometimes sold, sometimes not sold, a lot of it you know, t today is free on YouTube uh, or on blogs, but you know, books, audio books, podcasts, YouTube videos, all that, all that stuff. You guys know what I'm talking about. So the thought had occurred to me that here I am every day consuming, consuming, consuming all this content, so much so that I couldn't even incorporate all the content into my life and all the knowledge I was consuming due to the volume of it, right? I didn't care though. I loved it, okay? I still do. I wanted more and more and more, and I wanted to get better and better and better. Better at life. Uh, I wanted to be happier and more efficient with my life, especially with regard to, you know, health and fitness, building a better, a better body, better physique, uh, making more money and learning how to be financially independent as well as location independent. And then third thing, you know, getting better with women and having better relationships with them as well as better cultivating a better circle of influence. All right. You know, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So I always wanted to be leveling up as far as the people I was surrounding myself with was concerned. So I thought to myself, why am I only consuming all of this content? Right? If I love it so much, why don't I just create it? You know, if I love to consume all this content and I love to improve myself and get better, then surely there must be others out there like me, others that will identify with me. Surely there's other guys out there that 
want what I have to share, want what I have to say. Which brings me right into one of the other items on my list, which was leading and teaching other people. To go down memory lane just for a couple minutes here, and when I was in college, I learned about myself that I love to lead, motivate, and inspire other people, specifically men. Uh, I was in a fraternity in college, I went to a university, and I was the pledge marshal, pledge trainer of my fraternity. This meant that I was in charge of the boot camp style pledge ship that my fraternity had. I acted sort of like a drill sergeant most of the time, and then the, the, other, the other half of the time I acted as a coach, motivating these guys, these young kids, you know, most of which were freshmen or sophomores in college, to get through the hell that we were putting them through so they could get into our fraternity, right? So I sold these, get these young men on the idea that once they came out the other side of our grueling pledge ship, that they would be part of an elite group on campus, all right? And not just any group, but the elite group, right? Um, which our fraternity at that point in time on that campus was the elite group. Uh, we were the coolest fraternity, also the most controversial fraternity uh, on campus, all right? Now fraternities are a lot different nowadays than they used to be, unfortunately, but uh, that's the uh, you know feminized world we live in nowadays. I could go on a rant about that for another hour. We're not gonna do that, but our fraternity had the best parties, the hottest girls, the coolest guys. We were the best at sports. Uh, we had the most awards, everything, all right? We, and I truly believed this about our, I, about our fraternity. I believed in that fraternity and I fully bought into it. And my belief in it made those pledges believe in it as well, all right? And I put them through excruciating hell for three months, okay? The pledge ship lasted, give or take, about three months, all right? So I put them through excruciating hell. I did not make it easy for them to get in. I set the bar high, but the ones who wanted it bad enough got through, all right? So we would eliminate the weak links and only the ones who really wanted to get in would get in, right? So I would sell them. This is also in large part where I learned to sell as well. You know, I sold them on the idea of what was on the other side, just sitting there waiting for them. And what was on the other side was a better life, a richer, more abundant life, something they had never experienced in high school, you know, ridiculously insane parties with hot college girls everywhere and a brotherhood of guys that they could that they could call their own fraternity something guys today are severely lacking okay now that better life you know if you join a good fraternity you have those you have those those brothers and those friends for the rest of your life but uh, you know for some guys it was only for the duration of their time in college, which was, you know, the following three or four years. Even if it was just three or four years, they could at least enjoy the fruits of that labor for the, for the three years after they finished pledge ship, right? So I learned about myself that I had an innate ability to inspire people, men specifically, towards a better future. Remembering all this from my college years, it finally dawned on me that I needed to help other men through a blog or a video channel by creating content and just motivating and inspire, inspiring them in different ways, okay? I realized that's how I was going to earn my living because doing that, starting a blog, starting a YouTube channel, building a personal brand, was the one way I would, be, I would be able to incorporate all six of these things into one, okay? The, the, the main six things in my life that had motivated me on a daily basis. So if we go back to the list, okay, let's just run back through it one more time. Leading and teaching others. Leading and teaching others, all right? Uh, health and fitness building and developing 
a physique and a better body. Something I talk about on my channel. Attracting and understanding women, another thing I talk about on my channel. Okay, uh, I even had an old blog that was solely focused on that. Um, by the way, before Mission Life Motion, this is not my first attempt at this, but that um, I decided to, to take it in a different direction. Still something I talk about here at Mission Life Motion, obviously. And then, uh, you know, planning and organizing. So on my channel, that is basically how to be productive, how to double or triple your productivity, subjects like that, how to optimize and make your life more efficient and uh, streamlined. And then also the, the second item on the list again was self-help or self-improvement and personal development. That's what my entire and my whole channel is about, right? And then the last item on the list, traveling and sightseeing, that would naturally be something I knew I would be able to do as a successful blog artist slash content creator once I started to become successful. And sure enough, as of two months ago, I now live in Eastern Europe, which is somewhere I've had my eye on now for three, four years. So, and it's not the last place I'm gonna travel to. I'm gonna continue to travel around the world, okay? So, Victor Pride of the, the late, great, bold and determined uh, used to say, you know, earning a living online gives you the ability to come and go as you please and be location independent. So I knew earning my living online was going to be the key to traveling and being able to come and go as I pleased. And sure enough, it is. So, you know, I knew once I made it as a content creator, I would have that ability. So. While traveling, I knew my creativity would be stimulated as well. I could also blog and do videos about my experiences, which I have been doing and will continue to do. So I reasoned that starting this brand, right, Mission Life Motion, would encompass these six items on my list that I was extremely passionate about, right? Now remember, these six items were what consumed me you know, every day, week, and month for years, all right? They were, they were my six passions. So you have your six passions, right? Hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. You need to figure out what those are. And your number might not be exactly six, it might be, it might be five, it might be seven, it might be four, but you need to figure out what that is, okay? For me, it was six. The six things about life that fired me up, inspired me, and motivated me every day, okay? Uh, none of the items on my list represented negativity, pessimism, pessimism or bad energy, okay? Um, so, you know, once you have your list, guys, what you need to do is ask yourself how you can incorporate these into your everyday life while also offering value to people or solving their problems, because you're not gonna make money without solving an issue or a problem that people have. Uh, at least not as an entrepreneur, which a lot of you that watch my channel wanna be one day, right? So, as you can see, guys, I've really broken this down and deconstructed it for you pretty closely. I wanna be completely transparent that, you know, this is a, about the fact that this is basically a pretty easy process I went through, okay? And by that, I mean the process of discovering my life mission. It all started with me just sitting down and making a list of six items, okay? Um, you know, it may not work exactly like for you the way it worked for me, but it's a starting point. And chances are, if you watch my channel, if you like my content, you know, we're interested in a lot of the same things. Um, now, I'm not trying to push you to be a content creator by any means. I'm just saying your list probably won't be too dissimilar from mine, either in quantity or in the subjects that, that motivate you. So all you have to do is make your own list and figure out how you can solve people's problems, all right? Figure out what problems other men 
or men and women, okay, what problems can you solve for them, all right? And this is the approach I took, all right? This is what's gonna help you discover what your mission is. Remember, I cannot tell you exactly what you were put here for. I can't tell you exactly what your destiny is. Only you can decide that. And again, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Because after all, do you really want me or someone else to decide what your life purpose is? What your life's mission is? I didn't think so. Only weak-minded people want other people to tell them what their life's purpose is, okay? Uh, that's what most jobs are for, okay? Not all jobs, but most jobs. And real men pave their own life path, all right? They determine their own destiny. That's what real men do, real masculine men. All I can tell you, guys, is the process, which was a very simple process, okay, as I've just outlined, of what I did to find my life's mission. And I've broken the process I went through, that simple process I went through to arrive at me discovering what I wanted to do. Now, there's a lot more to content creation than just making YouTube videos and writing articles and, you know, blasting out tweets, right? I'm not gonna go into everything I have planned for this brand in this video. Trust me, there is a lot of it and it's going to span many years and it's gonna change a lot of lives. We don't need to get specific about that. All you have to do is stick around or subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and you'll watch that unfold over the course of your life. <clears throat> That's not the point of this video, all right? Um, I just wanted to illustrate the simple process I went through that helped me discover what my destiny and calling was, all right? I discovered it over time, all right, through deductive reasoning, and little by little, I put the puzzle pieces together and formed a crystal clear picture, okay? It may have happened quickly, but the process started when I was much younger than 28, far, far before the year 2014, okay? But once I started to become self-aware enough, all right, by reading books, listening to books, reflecting on on the things in my life I was passionate about and interested in. Once that process started, the answer came together pretty quickly. So hopefully in watching this video, guys, you might understand now why it's hard for very young, to men, very young men to know what their life's mission is, what their life's purpose is. Uh, and by very young men, I'm referring to guys between the ages of 16 and 28, okay? Uh, they simply have not had enough life experience yet. They don't know themselves well enough yet for the most part. Um, I think for most men, this changes at or around the age of 30. For me, it took 28 years, 28 years of agony, okay? I say it was agony because in a way it was, all right? A man is not really a man without a clear image, of, a clear image in his mind of what he's here for. All right, of what his true calling really is, what his gifts to the world are. I was born a leader. I was born to be a leader. I wasn't born a leader, I was born to be a leader, and I made myself a leader, okay? Uh, I was born to inspire and to motivate people, all right, especially men. And over the course of my life, while I was in college, while I was in my early sales career, I realized how to do that. I figured out how to do that, okay? One was leading by example, and, you know, I paid attention to what my strengths and weaknesses were, and I focused on my strengths, okay? I didn't try to monetize my weaknesses, I tried to monetize my strengths, all right? And that's exactly what I've been doing these last three to four years here at the, uh, at the channel, and that's exactly what I'll continue to do, all right? So as we, you know, go towards the future, guys, I encourage you to start asking yourself, what is it you were born to do? What's your mission? So I did mention, you guys, I, you know, I would give you something specific, some actionable advice here. So if you guys 
are watching this, listening to this, and you're still a little unclear specifically on steps you can take, if you're not sure, you know, even after you've made your list of five, six, seven items, whatever it is, here's something you can do in the meantime to get you started, okay? I've done a video on this guy before. His name is Dylan Madden. He's got a website called calmandcollected.com. Super awesome, laid back, cool guy. Uh, if you guys have never seen his blog, in addition to mine, that's another blog I recommend you check out, commoncollected.com. Dylan Madden has been around for years. I did a video about 10 months ago or so on a consultation I did with him. Uh, he offers one-on-one -on -one -on -one consults, or at least he used to. I'm pretty sure he still does. And I got a lot of value from that consultation. He actually coached me on everything, uh, not everything, but a, a big part of what I've been talking about throughout this video, my brand, Mission Light Motion. And, you know, he still helps me out a lot. So he's got a new book out. It's actually not even a book. It's like a, a book slash video course slash community that you can join that Basically what they do is they help you figure out, you know, where your strengths are, how to cultivate those strengths to create a location independent business. And you can basically have the ability to come and go, the ability to maneuver and the ability to come and go as you please. Once, once, once you figure out what your passion is, how you can help people, everything I've been talking about throughout this video, okay? This course he's created is designed specifically to help you figure out what your life's purpose and mission is, okay? Uh, one thing I always knew I wanted to do, especially after reading The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, was I did not want to be chained or handcuffed to one location. I wanted the ability to move countries to come and go as I pleased. Okay, I've mentioned that in several of my videos and he shows you exactly how to do that. So I have a link to his course in the description right below guys. I highly, highly encourage you to check that out. I'll also put a link down there to a video where he goes into more detail on it, but just to give you a quick summary, what you'll get with this course is a constantly updated video, uh, you know, module of, of different videos he has where he talks about how to do this access to a 24 7 freelance community um and you know he discusses it's called the freelancer profit manual i don't even think i've mentioned that yet so he shows you how to be a freelancer and how to learn earn money online so again you can be location independent and come and come and go as you please so he'll show you how to attract an endless supply of clients, uh, you know, why cold email is a waste of time and what to do instead, how to leverage free methods to get new clients, how to instantly build credibility, uh, tips and tricks to increase your profit, okay, your profit, not your revenue, but your profit, and how to get paid what you're worth and more. So those are just a few things he offers. So. Check that out, it's called the Freelancer Profit Manual. Dylan Madden, again, is an awesome dude. And uh, I hope you guys have gotten value out of this video. If so, hit the like button, it helps me out when you guys like these videos. It also helps me out when you subscribe. So hit subscribe, hit like. This is Matt Mitchell from Mission Life Motion. I'll catch you guys in the next video.